In the summer of 1975, one of the deadliest engineering disasters in history unfolded in central China. Entire towns vanished overnight. Up to 240,000 people lost their lives and millions more were left homeless. Yet outside of China, the tragedy of the Ban Kuo Dam remains relatively unknown. This is the story of how the world's so-called Iron Dam collapsed and how chain of decisions, design flaws and political pressures all converged into one of the greatest man-made catastrophes of the 20th century. To understand how Ban Kuo came to be, we need to go back to the 1950s. At this time, the People's Republic of China was only a few years old. The government was determined to modernise rapidly, and part of that vision was harnessing rivers for flood control, irrigation and hydropower. The Huai River Basin in Hanghong Province was a particular focus. This region had a long and painful history of devastating floods. For centuries, farmers along the Huai River lived under the constant threat of water surging over their fields and villages. After catastrophic floods in the late 1940s, the Chinese government launched a large-scale dam-building program. Bangkwao Dam, completed in 1952 with Soviet technical assistance, was one of the crown jewels of this effort. It was an earthen dam, built mostly with soil and clay with a concrete spillway. At the time, it was seen as a modern marvel. Engineers designed it to withstand what was considered a once-in-a-thousand-years flood. To the public, it was nicknamed the Iron Dam, a symbol of both technological progress and protection from nature's chaos. But behind the optimism, there were warning signs. Some Chinese engineers raised concerns that the design was flawed. Specifically, the dam lacked sufficient spillway capacity to handle extreme floodwaters. One hydrologist, Chen Sing, criticised the entire dam system in Henan, warning that it was being built too quickly and with inadequate safeguards. His warnings were largely dismissed. In the political climate of the 1950s, scepticism about grand state projects was often silenced. Fast forward to August 1975. Henan province had already endured weeks of unusually heavy rainfall. The soil was waterlogged, rivers were swollen and reservoirs were brimming. Then came Typhoon Nina. Originally formed over the Pacific Ocean, Nina weakened after making landfall, but when it reached central China, it collided with a cold front. The result was catastrophic. A storm system that stalled over Henan and unleashed relentless rainfall. In a single day, more than 40 inches, or about one metre, fell in some areas. That's roughly the region's annual rainfall in just 24 hours. Entire villages were drenched and dozens of reservoirs were filled to bursting. At Bangkwao, the water level rose rapidly. Operators tried to release water through the spillways, but the system could not keep up. By design, the dam could handle an inflow of about 13,000 cubic metres per second. The storm was delivering more than double that. On August 6th, engineers on site sent urgent reports up the chain of command. They pleaded for permission to release more water, even if it meant flooding downstream villages. But bureaucracy slowed the response. Officials feared political consequences if they admitted the dam might fail. For critical hours, decisions were delayed. By the evening of August 7th, Bangkwao Dam was in crisis. The water level was rising dangerously close to the top of the structure. Heavy rain continued to fall and smaller upstream reservoirs were already beginning to collapse, sending additional torrents downstream. Shortly after midnight on August 8, 1975, the unthinkable happened. At around 1am, Bangkwao Dam gave way. The collapse was sudden and catastrophic. A wall of water estimated at nearly 10 kilometres wide and several metres high surged out of the reservoir. 
in the first hour alone, over 700 million cubic metres of water poured downstream. Survivors later described it as though the sky itself had fallen. The floodwaters raced at terrifying speed, sweeping away entire towns in minutes. Concrete buildings crumbled, bridges were torn apart and thousands of people were carried off in the darkness. For many, there was no time to escape. Those who survived often did so by clinging to trees, rooftops or debris as the current roared past. And Bangkwar wasn't the only dam to fall. The intense rains and cascading failures overwhelmed the entire system. In total, more than 60 dams in Henan collapsed in the same storm, each one adding to the devastation. When dawn broke, the scale of the disaster began to emerge. Downstream of Bangkwao, a floodplain covering over a thousand square kilometres was submerged. Some areas were under more than 10 feet of water. The flood created a temporary lake that stranded entire communities on islands of higher ground. The immediate death toll was staggering. Tens of thousands perished in the first hours from drowning and collapsing buildings. But the tragedy didn't end there. With roads and railways destroyed, relief efforts were paralysed. Many survivors were trapped without food, clean water or medical care for days. Disease outbreaks followed. Dysentery and cholera spread rapidly in the stagnant water. Starvation became a real threat as crops were wiped out and supplies couldn't get through. Estimates vary, but historians generally agree that up to 240,000 people died. Some from the flood itself, many more from hunger and disease in the aftermath. Around 11 million were displaced, making it the deadliest dam failures in human history. One of the most striking elements of the Bangkwao disaster was how little the outside world knew at the time. In 1975, China was in the midst of the Cultural Revolution. Information was tightly controlled and the government was reluctant to admit the scale of the catastrophe. Officially, the disaster was described in vague terms and the death toll was downplayed. For decades, detailed accounts of the Bangkwao failure were suppressed. Only in the 1990s, with China's gradual opening, did fuller reports begin to emerge. By then, the world was shocked to learn that a tragedy on the scale of Hiroshima had occurred largely in silence. Looking back, the Bangkwao Dam failure reveals a complex mix of natural forces and human choices. The storm itself was extraordinary, a convergence of typhoon rains and a stalled weather front. But nature alone doesn't explain the disaster. The dam system had been built with inadequate safety margins. Spillways were undersized. Upstream reservoirs were too many and too weak, creating a domino effect. Maintenance was poor and emergency protocols were entangled in bureaucracy. Perhaps most importantly, early warnings from engineers were ignored. The culture of political conformity left little room for dissenting voices. In that sense, Bangkwell wasn't just a technical failure, it was a failure of governance. Today, the disaster stands as a cautionary tale. Dams remain a cornerstone of infrastructure worldwide, but they demand vigilance. Engineering is never infallible, and overconfidence can be fatal. Over time, the Bangkwell story has become clearer though some details remain contested or revised with new analyses. But even amid uncertainty, one responsibility is simple. To remember, not just the cause of failure, but the lives inside the flood. In a world building more dams, the line between safety and catastrophe is never fixed. It's patrolled day by day by maintenance workers, by honest reporting, by planners willing to say, we need a bigger margin and by a public that insists on asking hard questions.